So in this quick video, we're gonna go over the process of actually taking a walk cycle that is walking in place, that sort of treadmill type of walk cycle. And I'm gonna show you the process of how I actually get that translating forward in 3D space. So I've got this walk cycle that I've created here. We can go ahead and play the animation. So you can see I've created this walk cycle in the typical way that I create walk cycles, which I create this sort of treadmill type of walk cycle where the character is just walking in place. Uh, this allows me to really focus on the actual steps of the walk. I'm not actually worrying about the forward motion. I'm able to really focus in on getting the cycle working correctly. But eventually we'll want to get to the place where we want to actually see this walk cycle moving forward in 3D space. So let's go ahead and go over that process. It's a really simple process that I take. Um, oftentimes you might see that if you want to actually get your walk cycle moving forward in 3D space, you might take the main control, add a keyframe at one point, and then kind of eyeball this basically and like try to get your foot to not slide. So we're basically moving the the main control, the main mover control of this rig forward and trying to have it so this contacting foot is not sliding on the ground. So oftentimes you can try to come in here and sort of eyeball it to try to get it in the correct position and try to remove the sliding on your foot. But you can see by just eyeballing it this way, it's really hard to make sure your foot that's planted on the ground is completely flat and it's not moving. You can see that even this, we're getting some sliding on the foot, so we're gonna have to adjust this even more. We'll have to zoom in really far on the graph editor and really try to fine tune this adjustment to get something that works for us. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that keyframe. And a much easier way to do this is if we just take the, the left foot here, our contacting foot that is going to actually be sliding backwards on the ground. Basically, all we need to do is just take the translation information from the contacting foot and get it onto our main mover control. So I'm gonna select the left foot here. I'm gonna go into the graph editor, go to translate Z. And you can see I have a nice flat linear curve for the backward motion, which is really what you want when you are creating this forward motion. You don't wanna have any keyframes in here that's creating like an ease in or an ease out on that backward motion. You wanna make sure it's completely linear spacing wise. So it's moving all the way back to the next contact. So basically I just need to take the keyframe on zero, the keyframe on 16. I'm gonna highlight those. And then in my graph editor, I'm just gonna go to copy. So I copied that value of the left foot moving backwards. And then I'm just gonna select the main control. And with that selected, I'm gonna go into translate Z. I'm gonna go to the first keyframe there and I'm just gonna highlight it and then go to edit and paste. So it's basically taken that exact same curve of the foot and pasted it on the main control. Um, one thing you'll notice is that it looks like on this curve, I already have the correct cycle set, but if yours does not look like this, you wanna make sure you go to curves, pre-infinity cycle with offset. Yours might be set to either cycle or just linear. So it's gonna flatten that curve. You wanna make sure that you have the pre-infinity and the post-infinity set to cycle with offset. So it's basically just going to take the value from zero to 16, that translate Z value, and basically um, cycle that basically an infinite amount. So you can see I'm just continuing that, that value all the way through here. And it's just playing that as kind of this straight value. Um, so we're just getting this type of motion right now on the curve because all we did was copy the value of the foot control and paste it on our main control. So now we're getting double translation. Our foot is moving back at that value and at that timing. And then on the main control is also moving backward at that exact same value and timing. So we're getting this, if I play it here, this almost like moonwalk type of feel to our walk cycle because the character is actually moving backwards. Um, but we can take this and just fix this really simply by making sure we have both of our keyframes selected. And then I'm gonna go to edit and go to scale and I'll open up the option box. And I'll just make sure I reset my settings to make sure we're working at the same settings here. And then on this value scale pivot, I wanna change this from one to negative one. Now, if I hit scale keys, it's basically just going to flip this curve around. So now what we've created is that since we copied the backward motion 
of the contacting foot and pasted it and flipped it on our main control, it's basically taken that value and now we actually have the main control moving forward at that exact same value that the foot is moving backward. So now we actually get the result that we want. So the foot is actually staying completely contacted on that ground because the main control is moving forward at the same time and value that the foot is moving backwards. So they're kind of countering each other, which is giving us the result that we want where this foot is staying perfectly flat on the ground without any sliding happening at all. And I can play it through here and you can see we're getting the result that we want. So now we actually have this walk cycle walking forward in 3D space and it's really that simple. So this is the method that I use when I wanna make sure that I get my walk cycle moving forward in 3D space and without having any type of sliding on the feet, I just take the translate Z value of those contacting feet to make sure I'm getting the correct forward motion on that main control to result in no type of foot sliding. But typically when you are creating a treadmill walk cycle like this, it is a good idea to actually see your walk cycle moving forward in 3D space. You can get a good sense of the gait of each step, if that's working correctly, if the speed is working correctly. And you also might notice that once you see your walk cycle actually moving in 3D space, that you might spot things like maybe the up and down motion on the hips might need to be exaggerated a little bit. Maybe the sway in the arms might need to be pushed a little bit once you actually see this moving forward in 3D space. And what we can also do at any time, once we get this walk cycle moving forward, we can go back to frame zero and with the main control selected, we can just highlight the translate Z value, right click and choose mute selected. And then at any point we can get back to that treadmill walk cycle, make adjustments that we need to make. And then when we wanna see our walk cycle moving forward, we can just right click that and choose unmute selected. And now we've got our walk cycle. So it's a really straightforward and simple process. And this is how I translate my walk cycles forward in 3D space.